Many of you know already where North Coastal Peru is. Uh, there's uh, South America and the coast of Peru. And we're going to be heading to the North Coast region. For reference, Lima, which is about halfway north and south along coastal Peru, is there. And uh, I'll start out with a little bit of an introduction to the Moche culture, uh, also known as the Mochica culture. They were the dominant group in northern coastal Peru from roughly the time of Christ to somewhere around six or 700 AD. Um, they started in the valleys right around the modern city of Trujillo, which is about a million population these days, or a little bit more than that. Uh, three valleys, Viru, Moche, and Chicama. And roughly 300 AD or so, they expanded to the north and to the south. Virtually everything we used to know about the Moche came from their pottery. Anything prior to, say, 20, 25 years ago was basically from their pottery. And one of the greatest collections of their pottery, one of the easiest to see, is at the Larco Museum in Lima. Uh, it's a collection that uh, was assembled by a man by the name of Rafael Larco uh, Oile, uh, born 1901 and died 1966. Uh, an interesting guy. His family was Italian. They came to this area, north coastal Peru, in the late 1800s, uh, became very wealthy landowners on one of the biggest states in the Chicama Valley. And at the age of 11 or 12, as the youngest son of this very rich Peruvian family, he was sent off to Baltimore, Maryland to go to junior high and high school, and then went to Cornell University. So basically all of his teenage years up to the age of about 22 or 23 was in the United States. When he returned, he had a degree in agricultural economics. Uh, he helped out a little bit on his family estate, but he also had an interest in Peruvian archaeology. And he began to collect pots, uh, what in Peru is referred to as a waco, a ceramic pot from the past. Wacos are found in huacas. Wakas are pyramids or ritual sites, cemeteries, places like that, people, places of some sacred significance. And they were dug up by waqueros. Waqueros are grave robbers who dig up wakos in wakas. <laughs> also, his family, being very well-to-do, uh, bought several large collections of Peruvian pottery, such that by the 1930s, they had over 60,000 ceramic pieces from pre-Hispanic Peru. And this man, Rafael Larco Oile, began to study the collection in a systematic fashion. Um, now, the museum is wonderful for many different reasons, but perhaps one of the greatest things about this museum is that you can go into the storehouses. Most museums do not let you get into the collections. You simply are seeing what is there. But the Larco Museum lets you get into the storerooms, and that is just absolutely wonderful. One of the things that Rafael <coughs> Larco Oile did was figure out a sequence of pottery for the Moche culture. Uh, excavations were made under his direction. They weren't really what we would call today academic scientific excavations, but he had plenty of workmen from the large estate, and he was able to go out and do some excavations so that he at least had grave lots, uh, all of the material from one grave together. If you get stuff from the Waquero, obviously you're, you're not knowing what it, what it was associated with, but he was able to get the grave lots, and he noticed that there were some that were earlier and some that were later on top of uh, earlier stuff, uh, the sequence runs uh, from Moche 1 through Moche 5. Moche 1 and 2 are pre the expansion that we now know took place somewhere around 300 AD. And Moche 3 and 4 and 5 are when Moche is a much larger area along the coast of Peru. Basically, Moche 1 on the left up there is sort of squat and has sort of tapered spout. Moche 2 has a very globular rounded uh, vessel with a very high spout and usually a long, a thin neck. And by Moche five times, uh, it's more angular, particularly the spout is more angular, and the spout is tapering inward rather than outward. 
I'll show you a bunch of slides here very quickly of various Moche pots. This is an early one, Moche, two, uh, Moche 1, sort of sharp spout. This is about Moche uh, 1 or 2. This is a Moche 3 pot, that nice tall uh, spout. This is a Moche 3 pot again. You might notice that uh, in some of the pots, the vessel itself is simply a rounded uh, thing with uh, decorations painted onto it, drawings painted onto it. Other Moche pots are like this, which is basically a figure. Uh, there, a Muscovy duck. Here's some sort of uh, uh, seabird. A deer with some human attributes. There again, deer with some human attributes. Or human figures. Moche pottery is generally regarded as among the best pottery that was developed anywhere in the world in pre-Hispanic times, or, uh, uh, ancient times. Nice little figure there or here. The last two, uh, not very high status. Here, a little bit higher status person with a, a headdress. There, a warrior. And here, a very high status person. We know this person is high status. He has ear spools. Uh, these are large circular uh, things that went through a hole in the ear, and high status people typically are wearing ear spools. Here again, a high status person, although he's wearing perhaps an owl mask or some uh, high status owl in the form of a human. Again, high status person there. The last slide, and this one you might have noticed that they were very, very similar. These are mold-made pots, and in many cases we have a dozen or more pots that clearly came out of the same mold, exactly the same pots. It's one of the nice things at the Larco Museum. You can go in and you can see uh, a variety of pots that are absolutely identical, or in some cases are painted different, different colors on them, but the form of the vessel is exactly the same. The person that studied the uh, Moche pottery more than anyone else is a man named Chris Donnan at UCLA. Now, uh, I was in the first class that Donnan ever taught in the spring of 1969 at UCLA. He's recently retired. He's published a number of books on Moche pottery, including uh, this one, Moche Portraits from Ancient Peru, is his latest book. There's Chris there, and there's Chris and I together. Again, I've been good friends with Chris for more than 40 years. I've been showing you pots where the vessel itself is the uh, showing you uh, the, the thing, uh, the, the portrait fi figure or the deer or whatever. Uh, but one of the more interesting uh, parts of Moche is ceramics is that many of them have fine line drawings painted onto the pot itself. This is a classic example of a fairly late one. It's Moche 4 or Moche 5. Here is a scene of a fisherman. And there is the same scene rolled out. Uh, because it's a, a globular form, you need to roll it out to be able to see exactly what the entire scene is. It's clearly a Moche fisherman. The scene on that last one is uh, a person uh, near a high-status uh, uh, building. This little, oops, back this up. This little building there in the center with the decorations on the roof. High-status person off on the left, and various material that's being brought into the high-status person on the right side of that scene. On this one, the figures are fighting. Warriors in combat. That's the rollout from that one. One of the most famous scenes is this one called the burial scene. Or here in the lower one, what is sometimes referred to as the presentation scene, uh, where individuals are bringing things to a high status person in a high status little dwelling. This is the presentation scene as a, another rollout. And uh, in studies that were made, say, 20, 25 years ago, 
uh, the presentation scene has a series of identified figures. First is the high status person who's receiving, that's called individual A. The second is a high status, uh, maybe high priest, that is taking things to individual A, that's B. And the third character we want to talk about briefly is the next person in line there, individual C, who is apparently a high priestess, it's a female. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit here about A, B, and C as we go along. Here's another version of the same presentation scene, again from left to right on the top. On the left is A, receiving, B, being handed, and C, uh, the high priestess uh, in uh, the middle. She's shown a little bit smaller, uh, females, not quite as high status, apparently, at least in this scene. Question? Do they read left to right or right to left, or do they know? Uh, they are seen in left, right, right, left uh, elements, in some cases, as here, we don't have the full scene. We only have, this is individual C uh, in the scene. In other cases, we'll see A doing things. Um, the analogy that Chris Donovan has oftentimes used is to think about these scenes like a Christmas card. You receive something in late November and it has three guys on camels and you don't think to yourself, this is a Halloween card. Uh, you know it's a Christmas card. If you see a little baby in a manger, you know it's a Christmas card. You see uh, a couple of shepherds out in the field with stars in the background, you know it's a Christmas card. If you're familiar with the Christmas story in Christianity, you can fill in all the details by seeing one little element. What we can do with Moche is see elements of the scene, but we don't know the story. This is individual C, again, the high-status female. Uh, she's carrying a cup.